G'day friends. Hello, welcome. <laughs> Forgot my own intro. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Hello, you're here. This is gonna be a super long, random video. I am putting together my stuff for Paris and London, going on a little trip, uh, literally going in a week and I need to get everything sorted. I'm in between because like I still need to use some of this stuff so I feel like if I put it all away and then I get it all back out again it's going to be a nightmare but you know what I'm just going to put it all away and I will do my best to put it back if I end up using it. You know what probably won't end up using it but whatever. Um, I got this journal here I've been doing collage club stuff in here so this big spoiler alert for collage club in June but I'm going to test out some stuff in here if I need to although it's not going to be super relevant because I'm not going to be using a journal like this. This is Canson cold press watercolor paper, and I just bind them into these little signatures. I do, however, the only thing I, I, I know is I want to take pencils, and I already have a color palette that I selected, and um, I want to fit everything inside one of these. These are like little mini so, uh, they're like a Muji knockoff, little pouches. I only want to take one. I don't know why I've got three. Don't need those. But yeah, I want to fit everything into here. So this is going to be absolutely chaotic trying to figure out what I'm going to take and what I'm not. <laughs> but the whole point is to keep it super pared back, super minimal. I do this every time I go traveling. I pack the most insane amount of stuff and I never end up using half of it. Although I did when I went to Australia, but that was a whole different experience. I'm not going to be having that type of holiday this time because I feel like I'm going to be swept off my feet for most of it. So um, here's the journal that I have. I have a box of journals that have never been touched. I know, tragic. Uh, some of them I just save because I really love them and I don't, I don't know what to use them for, like this Grinch one. Like, this is just ultimate dream journal. What am I supposed to do with that? <laughs> I should just collect it. Keep it forever. Maybe in my lifetime I'll get to using some of these. But I have a whole row of traveler's notebooks here. I actually got most of these in Japan, so they're super cheap when you get them from the actual store. Uh, I've got a few different types. Craft paper, which I think I'm gonna nix because that just becomes a nightmare when you're coloring in things. Uh, which, who knows if I'm actually going to do that or not, but I want to give myself the best chance. Blank is, I mean, it's trusty. Lightweight paper, this is the Tomoya River paper. I was thinking about this one. There is a sketch paper version, which might be better. I actually don't plan on taking watercolors this trip. I, or do I? See, this is the thing. This is why I turned on this, um... <laughs> this camera because I don't know what I want. I don't know what I want to do. If I take watercolors, it's going to be the tiniest set with a water brush because I don't want to carry around um, my whole palette that I just revised. It's a beautiful palette. And yes, if I was going for a long time and I could see myself painting a lot, I, I would definitely take it. I actually don't think there should be a rule about how much you take, but I just know realistically for this trip, it's not it's not going to matter that much. I have all my extra stuff. Here are some other blanks that are just special covers, which might be nice. The Mr. Softy one, I've always loved that one. Cream. It's a blank, but it's cream. Got a few of those. Oh, watercolor paper. See, that's the other one I was thinking of. The thing I don't love about the sketch paper and the watercolor paper versions, these are all Traveler's Notebook Company, by the way, the Traveler's Company. Uh, it used to be called Midori a long time ago. But I don't love that they're perforated because I feel like with the way I might travel journal this, it may, there may be a lot of um, pressure put on that perforation and I feel like the pages all might just fall out. So this is why I stray away from these types of journals, even though 48 pages, 24, this is probably perfect 24 pages because that's not a ton. And I do like to have these um, travel travel ones full by the end of it. Let me have a look at this. I think for Australia, we filled a whole craft paper one. I used a craft paper one for my trip to Australia most recently. And you know, the perforation is not, it's not intense. So I think I could get away with it. Do I want to do, do I want to do one of these? You know what? Long time ago when I went to Japan here, I think this is it here. Um, I believe I used... Oh, I, I don't know. These might have been old Jane Davenport ones. Either way, they're still like a plain traveler's notebook. But this one, I think, is... No. This one might have been from someone who handmade it, because it looks like it's bound. Uh, like, stitch. Coptic stitch bound. Who made this? I want to say I, I remember the name, but I can't... I just can't remember it right now. <laughs> like, I do remember it was handmade, actually. Well, not handmade, but it wasn't from... Traveler's Company. Oh, goodness. Well, I don't know. Either way, I did remember taking this just in case I wanted to paint and sketch while I was there and draw. 
but I didn't do a ton of it while I was there. I mean, I did a bunch, but not everything. Uh, it was just kind of good to have for those times I wanted to urban sketch, like I did, uh, what's it called? Mermaid Lagoon. I did some people sketching while we were waiting for shows. And I am going to Disneyland in Paris, so there'll be an opportunity for me to sit down and sketch stuff. I think I did the castle in here somewhere too. Where is it? There it is. I did that while we were waiting for a parade. So this would be the only reason I'd want to take this. You know what? Maybe I will. Maybe I'll take the teeniest, tiniest watercolored setup just for some watercolor, like plein air sketching. Because I think Steve has kind of worked into our itinerary like a few little options to sit down and like be at a cafe and eat a croissant and sketch something. So let's do that. Let's have this as a watercolor option at the back. And the main one, do I want to do cream or white? Do I want to do a special cover? No, I won't do a special cover because it's not Paris or London. Maybe I will do... Cream seems different. And I've got this if I need pure white. Look, let's do cream. I'm gonna do that. Try something different. Yeah, that looks nice. Very Parisian, very chic. Okay, that was a bit easier than I thought. I fully expected to spend half the day worrying about that. <laughs> Maybe the camera being on is uh, forcing me to make my decisions. So, don't need that. I have already picked pencils, like I said, and I did a bit of a swatch. These were the ones that I wanted. I tried to keep it a really limited color palette that actually matched this kind of uh, creative frenzy I went on during Collage Club uh, time where I was making lots of illustrations for it. But then I wanted to add a few more colors because I wanted to make sure that I had a skin tone for Steve, a skin tone for myself, a dark brown because I thought, well, if I'm gonna draw any nature, I might need a dark brown. But, and I even mentioned this in the Collage Club video and I got really sidetracked and was like fully talking about and rambling it for <laughs> 10 minutes. Um, the point of me choosing a really limited color palette was so that I had to choose from the options I had, that I wasn't able to always get the right colors for something. So in essence, I didn't even have this red blue pencil in there at the beginning, but I do love these. So I'm going to take one. When I sketched them all out, I didn't have like a strong red. It was kind of this pinky red. And then I didn't have like a true orange. It was almost, uh, it's like a salmon color or like this dark yellow mustardy color. And only until I put this in, this is more of a red orange, that's when I kind of fleshed out these reds. But before I put in these skin tones for Steve, myself, and the red blue pencil, and this brown, this was the color palette I had. And this was what I used to make all of these illustrations for Collage Club, uh, which I really, really love. And bonus, they scan really well. So if I wanted to scan any of the stuff that I do overseas, these colors stay pretty true. Now I am doing it on a cream paper, which already brings up like, I'm gonna have to erase the background kind of manually, but it shouldn't be that big of a deal. And honestly, I've got to stop making decisions with that in mind all the time. Like sometimes I have to just forget about what this might become in the end and just enjoy setting myself up for success. <laughs> Cause I do that a lot. I, sometimes I, I worry way too much about like, is it scannable? Should I finish this illustration just in case I use it for something else? Like there's that business brain that just kind of clicks in and it really uh, irritates me sometimes when I don't need it. So this was the color palette. And you know what? I might regret this, but I'm gonna get rid of this burnt sienna <laughs> because I know for a fact, if I go to draw a tree, I will grab this for the trunk and I don't want the option. I want to force myself to pick from here in a way that won't make sense. I am gonna take these though. Maybe, hopefully, I won't gravitate towards this because it's too light for a tree trunk mostly, but um, I just want the skin tones for Steve and I and this red-blue pencil. So these can all go in here. I know those purples look the same, but they're different enough to me. <laughs> this is like how I put together my, uh, what was it? My paint palette. I had those two almost identical red oranges, but they were slightly different enough for me to warrant putting them both in there. I'm gonna put a ruler in there just in case. Put a little eraser. Do I want that eraser? No, I don't. Too big. I want this eraser, the Tombow Mono Knock. I also want to use these. Uh, I had a really good time sketching with these the other day. This is a Zebra M301. Oliver, my cat just got on the desk, excuse me. Sorry about that, he's gone now. Um, M301, I got this in an Art Snacks box. It's a 0 0.5, so 
I might just in case grab a refill for it. Oh, here, is this a 0 0.5? No, these are the flat ones. Super random. This is a 0 0.5. I love these LEDs. Maybe I should just put the LEDs in there. Like in my travel palette, just in case. I have a feeling I'm gonna be using mechanical pencil more than I'll be using a pen. But I don't even wanna take like lots of pens either. I wanna take a white, cause I always take a white. There you go, I'm just gonna pop this in. Great. I'm gonna pop that in, pop in the little lead refills as well. I could probably buy those if I needed them, but whatever. Do I need to refill anything else? I don't think so. A little gelatoni tin, love that. And what else did I have? This, I was thinking of taking this, oh, I'm gonna sneeze. White pen. My Hobonichi Techo. This is just a ballpoint pen, but it's got black, red, and blue. And I do love just using that. Also, I think I wanna take, I need to figure out which one's more full. I think this one's more full. I really want to take that. I love my brush pens. Here's my other issue. Do I take a fine liner or do I take a ballpoint pen? Because sometimes the ballpoint pen smudges. I should probably take both. Is this the ballpoint pen I want? I've got a few others in here. Oh, do you know what might be really pretty and make me feel really special? One of these. Is this the fountain pen? Oh, <laughs> I just undid the whole thing. I don't know if this is the fountain pen or if this is the... Yeah, that's the fountain pen. I think this might be empty. Yeah, it's empty. Let's not do fountain pen because they pressurize in the cabin and sometimes become a nightmare. Let's do the Brass Travelers Company pen. Love that. I also have this one. Maybe for ballpoint I can use this one as well. This is a Twisby, I think. Twisby? No. Kaweco, Lilliput, that's it. Yeah, this one's a little heavier, a little darker. I think I'm gonna take both of these. This, see, this is what happens, I put multiples of things in here and I shouldn't be, but I can't help it. That'll go in there. I think I wanna take just a regular pencil as well, just in case I wanna do some shading that's not, uh, you know what I mean, like not, Mechanical pencil. <laughs> I felt like if I just kept doing this with my hands, I'd get it. Uh, and then, yeah, I do want to take, I love these Derwent liners, the Line Maker. A three, that one's kind of empty. I've used them so much, they're all kind of a little bit empty. So let's see what still exists in this Derwent set. You know what, maybe there are some in here. Cats, stop it. Ooh, do I want this? Maybe I want the black one. I'll take that one. Oh, the line, the zero one. That one might be good. I do love this red pen too. Do I want this red pen? This one's a good kind. Of, see, this is why it's in my travel kit because all of these are really good. <laughs> this sketching thing. Maybe I want these. I'm gonna take all of this stuff out here just in case I want any of this. Might replace that with that. I don't know if I want a travel brush. I think I just want a water brush. This is a washi roll. Do I keep this? No, I don't need washi. I'm not going to be doing anything there. I will collect all of my ephemera and bring it back. What's in here? Brushes and a gray. Don't need that. Great. This is what happens every time I pack this um, Sky Bambi companion. I just ransack it for bits. You'd think I'd have enough to build, like, just keep that there and then have everything else, but... And I do, actually. A lot of these I have multiples of, but I just keep stealing them from there because they're fresher and newer, so... That's <laughs> my bad. Alright, the zero one, one Great. Works perfect. I'm getting quite full. That sharpener takes up a lot of space. She might need to go. I do want that blending stump. I said I was going to replace that red-blue... Mitsubishi red-blue pencil. Just because that one's a little shorter. Oh, only the tiniest bit, but anyway. I have longer ones. I probably should just choose a good one. It's fine. I won't go through a whole pencil there, surely. 
do I need this? Do I need this? I don't think I need this. This is what I usually use when I really want to make something like a, a sketch underneath and then clean it all up. I don't see myself doing that, so I'll put that away. This is a uni style fit. There's a pencil, a red gel pen, and a black ballpoint pen. This is kind of like my go-to pen if I really want to travel with like only one pen. Should I use this? I should put that in there just in case. I'm so tragic. And I, I do want that. Oh no, it's gonna be so full. <laughs> This sharpener is really getting in the way. I don't have any smaller sharpeners that have the, the attached, like, bin, the little barrel bit. So it is what it is. I can take clips, these, or Mickey Mouse. Well, let's do Traveler's Notebook. I'm feeling very fancy. All right, we're still zipped up at this point, but it's getting desperate. I could put the clips on my journal as I go. Which, what is my journal? Sorry, just dealing with my allergies over there. Oh, here. I need a traveler's notebook cover as well. This is a bunch of mini palettes that I have. Some are set up for travel, like that's a trio there, but I, where is the... Where's the primary palette? Did I mix that up again? But I want it in a- I want a small one. I could just choose a random one. But I have mixed and matched a lot of these already. Hungry for paint. A lot of these are Lost Girl watercolor. I know I've got primary palettes in here somewhere. Oh, this is gouache. So this is metallic and primary. I guess I'll put that over there just in case. Yeah, not that. No. 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 Ooh, that one got damaged. No. Okay, so these are that. I don't want those three metallics in there, so I should probably switch that out for something else. Or do I want one? Maybe I want one metallic. I'll use the Copper Candles, Designs by Rachel Bear. Ra Rachel. <laughs> Rachel Bear. Both of those are Copper Candles. Take the more full one. Although I kind of want... Oh, this is my dilemma. What do I want in there? I have all of these colours I can pick from, and I have a ton more watercolours elsewhere. If I was going to pick, maybe I would just pick this as like a bit of a skin tone option, because it's kind of in the middle. I think I could make this a little bit deeper for Steve, a little bit lighter for me. Put a little bit of red in there for me. It's a little earthy too. What green does this make? I think it makes a really kind of flat green. I need to test it. This is why we're here. Let me just get this page. Excuse me again. My nose! My allergies have come back. Crazy. Of course all of these are empty. Why would any of these be full? What is wrong with me? There's a tiny bit in there. So that green is, yeah, see, I do not love that green. On the more yellow end, I can see it looking a little bit more natural, but on the bluer end, it just gets really dull. It's a very natural mix, I think. I might want something richer. Because only lately I've only cared about these greens. I'm just into interesting greens right now. Don't cactus. This is Lost Girl watercolor. Sometimes I worry about these just because they can have shimmer in them, which doesn't scan well a lot of the time, but also it doesn't really matter a lot of the time. See, this is again me making those 
decision, decisions about scanning, I think that's too close to the mix that I can get to warrant having that. This one's called Wands. Looks a little green. What's like a deep? Well, I kind of like that. I, I think that also functions as like a gray, maybe. Like if I added a little bit of yellow to that, what am I going to get? Or an olive green. What if I add a bit of blue? Oh yeah, we kind of get this like dirty gray. Bit of, orange, uh, bit of red. I'm liking having this in there because I think this will give me an option for something darker. I do have a black brush pen, so that kind of acts as a black paint or a black ink. But this might be a nice in-between for like architecture and stuff. Even if I put this beige down with a little bit of it, not the beige, the kind of sandy color, I think that'll be nice too. If I really watered it down to be a nice like shadowy gray. Let's use that. And then metallic just for fun. There we go. Seems good to me. I'll give this a bit of a wash out as well. And um, that can be my palette. So that's got to fit inside here as well. Uh oh. <laughs> Is anyone stressed? I'm stressed. What am I going to do? These palettes aren't for anything specific. I just change them out whenever I'm going through a phase. There they go. So there's a primary set. Oh, it does fit. It's just, it's that stupid thing. It's that sharpener. I'm not going to not have this sharpener. Because I feel like I have to. If I have a sharpener that doesn't have that little barrel on it, I'm not going to sharpen anything. Because I'm not going to have a bin everywhere I go little rubbish bin. The brush pen, these are the two that I would choose from. Tried and true, trusty. They're both very old. This one's a little thinner than this one. I feel like this one's a good in-between. So let's put, put that one in. It's the Tim Holtz Detailer brush, which I believe is a, a Kuretake brush. Love that that in there. I know there are travel ones, but I've always just preferred that one. And I think you should just go with what you prefer, right? That looks like everything. Now, you'll probably notice I don't have scissors. Don't need them. Not going to do any of that. Uh, don't have glue. Don't need it. Not going to do any of that. My main purpose for when I'm going for these travel journals is to just kind of get it all in there. You know what, I do think I, do I want a washi tape, like one washi tape just to stick everything down with? Like, I think it might be nice to have this just so that even if I don't end up, like, say I grab a pamphlet from a restaurant and I just want to put it in there because, you know, it's, it's here, it's easy. I can just tape it in. Now, I don't mind if everything's hanging over the edge. In fact, I'll show you, this is how willing I am to chunk up this journal. This is my trash journal, my garbage bin journal, which holds exactly what you think it does. All of my junk. <laughs> what do we end up calling it? Garbage journal, there it is. This is literally all the junk that it flies across my desk at any given moment. Just random stuff that I think, where does that belong? Oh, well, it lives in here now. Even my old hair tie. For those of you who don't know, I cut my hair off. It's all short again. Um, so this is my last hair tie. I was literally down to the last one, so that's a good memory for me. Um, it's all junk. It's literally all junk, but it reminds me of things. So I just keep it in here, and it's so full, and it's so chunky. I absolutely love it. And I wouldn't mind... Look at the, the poor staples are barely holding on. I wouldn't mind if my travel journal looked like this this time. My Australian one kind of looked like this, and I feel like this would be nice to have for France and Paris as well. It just takes a lot of the pressure off of finding really beautiful ways to do everything. I love journals like that as well. My Japanese journal uh, from 2019, my travel one, is so beautifully like put together. And I do really love that as well, but those 
processes take months and sometimes I'm in the mood to do that and sometimes I'm not in the mood to do that. I'm at a season right now where I'm just loving this, so I'm going to really lean into it. Um, you know, I don't, I don't think there's ever a journal I look back on and regret what I've done. Like, even if I'm in this mood now and I know that, you know, maybe two years from now I think this was so messy, I don't think I'll regret it. Because I don't, I haven't looked at any of these journals in the past and really regretted doing any of them in any of the styles that I chose to do them. The ones that I spent two days on, I don't regret doing that. You know what I mean? Like, doing two days per one spread, I, I think that's just such a great memory and it's, it was just that time period. The ones that I spent, you know, the 24 hour journals I did, like, all in one day, seeing as much as I could get done, I don't regret doing that either. Like, I think they're all... They're all just indicative of my mood in that season and how I'm feeling and what I'm up to and the challenges I set for myself or, you know, the aesthetic value I place on something. At this present moment, it's just de-stashing junk, but kind of like harnessing all of these memories into this one place. And so that's where I feel like I should lean in for Paris. The only question I have left though is what cover do I use? I only have two of these covers. I currently have this one, which is a lot more pared back. Uh, I just have my two charms on there. This is my charm from Playtest Patreon, my creative charm, and this one's the Traveler's Factory Tokyo Station. And I glued these on. And this is my church journal. This just has stuff from, like, church. So that can go and I can use, I can use, like, a very clean, beautiful journal, like this which would be really pretty. That feels so nice. Um, or oh, this one is super beaten up. And I think even a touch stretched from uh, <laughs> from how much I've stuffed in there in the past. But it is very... It's a lot more me in the sense that, like, all the charms and the patches all over it um, are just a bit more hectic. I have these little ruby slippers that I got from Will. Uh, he even uh, gave me... He gave me this little, like, hang tag, but I took the... Um, <laughs> took this stuff off and put them on here. Sorry, Will, I really did love the hang tag, but I felt like I would appreciate it more if it was on my channel. <laughs> um, and then, if I put it in here, I, I don't know if I would... See, I don't like not having this on because it's kind of marked up the front, but I never use this clip. Uh, if I have it in here... It's just a lot of jingle jangle. Like, I don't think there's much of a difference. Obviously, they're the same brown leather cover. One is just a bit more chic than the other. One's just a bit more me and hectic. Do I want to be hectic? Do I want to be me? I don't think I want to be me in Paris. I think maybe someone else. Let's be chic in Paris. Let's be Emily in Paris. <laughs> chic, maybe? Yes? No? Has anyone seen that show? Goodness. It's so funny to me. Uh, let's do that. I like this. This is nice, it's different, it's unusual. So, like I said before, I could take these clips out and pop them in here, because they would need to be with the journal anyway, and that would just free up a touch more space inside this pouch. So that if I did want to put this in here, will it fit? Please let it fit. We'll be good, we'll be done if it fits. Ooh, there you go. Oh, Alleluja Kim. Success in the bush. And then let's put these... I could just clip them to the front, really. No, that's a nightmare. I know I could put these in the elastics, but if I'm truly honest with you, I rarely use the elastics. Because when I go to use the book, I usually pull the whole insert out and then just use this insert independently. Not all the time, but a lot of the time. So I usually just use this as the cover, shove them in there and let the elastic hold them in, like the outside elastic rather than the inside. Oh, that's nice. I do like that. And this will be my travel journal setup. Isn't it teeny tiny? I cannot believe it. This should work for me. There is no reason this shouldn't work for me. If this doesn't work for me, I'm the least creative person on the planet. Mark my words, quote it. <laughs> I wanted to take this, I wanted to use this, but we already know my little um, issue with this was that the, the traveler's notebooks didn't fit into the pocket because they're a little too tall. Um, and we did have the workaround, but I just don't want to deal with that workaround while I'm out and about. 
And I was going to almost use it for a travel wallet as well, but also I lose things really easily and I felt like that was just asking for trouble. Oh, don't look at that. <laughs> My boudoir photos are at the front. I don't have that hair anymore. Anyway, stickers, photo journal, that can just stay here, enjoying its life as what it already is. Okay, should I swatch everything out? Should I test everything out? I think, I mean, I know how it all works, but maybe you want to see what I've got access to in my journal. Do you know what? Let me go fill up that water brush and I'll be back. Okay, I've got this journal here. I'm going to do a spread on this front cover of everything I'm going to take to Paris. Oh, do, should I do this in my journal? I should probably do it in my journal, shouldn't I? Because that's what I'm taking and so I might as well document all the supplies I took with me. Let's do that. See you later, this journal. I should do it in the watercolour one because I'm going to use the watercolours. So, let's get into it. Let's start with the brush pen. Supplies. And London. Do you know what? This is probably going to take so long. Let me uh, put this into a <laughs> speed and I will... Is that, is that an N? Can someone tell me if that's an N? <laughs> That is for sure a W. <laughs> I can't speak and write at the same time. Shouldn't be a journaler. Um, okay, I'm going to put you in speed. I'm going to do a voiceover for all of this. I mean, does it even need a voiceover? I mean, I might want to chat anyway. If you hear me talking, I'm, I want to be chatty. If you don't, these are going to be the old supplies. I'm going to do a little spread just to uh, see what I've got, make note of it, kind of celebrate that we could fit it all into this teeny tiny little pouch. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. If I see you in the voiceover, I'll see you there. And if not, have a wonderful day. I'll see you again soon. Bye. Okay, hello. I'm in the picture in picture. I was going to do a voiceover, but I thought, you know what? I haven't actually shown that I've cut all my hair off. So here it is. Here's your first look. I look a mess today, but I'm feeling a mess. Everything in the house is turned upside down because we're trying to get everything ready for our trip and also trying to wrap up like projects that we've been working on and Steve's been super busy and like, you know when those, you know those periods where everything seems kind of hectic and chaotic and all out of control? For me, I'm not so much in that place, but because Steve's in that place, I'm kind of like going out in sympathy, I guess. <laughs> anyway, no, and there's washing everywhere, there's clothes everywhere, it's a mess. But uh, it's a nice day, it's a beautiful day, and I thought I would get on here, show you that it is all chopped off, all the hair is currently plaited and in a little box. I have to ship it off to Locks of Love. For those of you who don't know, I just grew it out over the pandemic for literally no reason. Other than, I should say no reason, there was one reason. I was genuinely curious to see what my hair would look like long. I've always wondered. I grew it out once long before, kind of like this length. But then one day I got really sick of it because I was sick of waking up with hair and bobby pins everywhere. I, uh, I just got it all cut off. And I was kind of regretting it because I thought, oh, if I gave it another month, like then I would really know what that looked like. And not always regret it, just sometimes I would think about it. Anyway, throughout the pandemic, I was like, well, I'll just grow it. And originally, I was like, I'll grow it until I go to an audition, because I would probably want to chop it all off in an audition just to make sure I looked clean and professional and whatever. Um, but, you know, times have changed. You can get away with a lot more now in auditions. So that didn't even really matter. And I did go to one audition, and I didn't chop it off. And at that point, I was like... Um, I'd been growing it for so long, I wanted to donate it, but it had to be a certain length for it to be donated. So I decided to grow it out until it got to that length, and then I would chop it off and donate it. That way, it wasn't just about the pure curiosity of what my hair would look like if it was long. I always thought I'd be someone with long hair that would like style it all the time and do it nicely. That is so not true. I maybe styled it like six times the whole time I had it. Uh, I'm just apparently not that person that I always thought I would be. <laughs> Much more fun for me to play with long hair on the dolls or on my little sister, just not for myself. So I've always known that this is a more flattering hairstyle for me. And even though it's not really done right now, hopefully you can see it's all nice and short. Um, I'm loving it. I feel like my old self again. It was a journey, a hideous journey for many, many in between awkward length months, uh, which is all documented on Art Snacks channel. If you go back <laughs> and look. Every month I go and do an Art Snacks box free stuff video, you can literally see the progression and there were some hideous months. There was just hideous months of me personally, like just my own like aesthetic journey I was going through. Um, but hopefully we're back on track now. <laughs> oh goodness. You gotta love yourself through it though. I'm getting a little white in my beard too, which is really interesting. I'm kind of loving it, but it only, it only comes up in this little patch here. So I don't know what that's about. Anyway, uh, oh, so I put together the little swatch page here, just kind of all the things that I'm taking with me. 
Upon doing all of that, there were a few things I thought I could take out, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to commit to it because I've already put it in there and I feel weird about taking things out that I put down on the page of supplies I'm taking because then I feel like I've faked something. So I'm going to take it and I'll be mad at myself if I didn't take out that extra ballpoint pen, but it is what it is. Um, my brain just works that way and I need to appease it because <laughs> I feel awkward if I don't. So it's all staying in there. Um, it kind of worked. You know, the only thing I think I probably could have worked out better are the watercolors because the secondary mixes aren't that much fun uh yeah but i don't anticipate using much watercolor and if i do i imagine that it's mostly natural scenes or architecture or like kind of out and about on plain air and so i think for the most part having those real kind of i'm gonna say real tones but like i would typically choose printer primaries a cyan type color, magenta, like a hot pink and a bright, bright yellow, just to make really vivid, punchy, bright, bold colors. Um, so I don't ever usually choose anything so regular, which in a sense is me going out of my comfort zone. So much with the pencils where like, I kind of have to choose one that, you know, is close enough to the color. Like there's no bright green in those pencils. So, and because I can't really even mix a bright green, I am just never going to have the option of bright green, <laughs> which seems like a crazy thing to set up because you, when you set up your palettes and stuff, you want to give yourself the best possible chance to, I guess, create anything you want to create. Um, but you know, I like to limit myself. I find that speaking of box freestyle and art snacks, sometimes with those limitations, I'm, I tend to think a little bit more creatively. If I have access to everything that I feel comfortable with, generally I will make things that are totally within the, my comfort zone and that is so fine and so normal, but it is also harder for me to respond well to stuff like that and especially knowing that I've got a limited amount of time because this really interesting thing happens when you're when you're going to do something you know you can do or that you are comfortable doing, you critique it a lot harsher because you are fully aware of what you're capable of with a certain set of art supplies and a certain, you know, setup and a certain color palette. And so your expectations tend to be a little higher for things that you are familiar and comfortable with. So that's why I feel like I can fully lean into that low to no expectation type travel journal that I want. And that kind of haphazard, put it all in there, shove it all in there, just do what I want to do kind of feeling. If I'm not tempted to over control and, you know, over choose everything and feel like, oh, this is the color palette I know. And well, you know, I know how to do it. I just wanted to be a little bit out of my comfort zone. If that all makes sense. We don't even need it to make sense. No one asked. <laughs> um, anyway, so I had a great time putting it all together. I'm excited to see what happens. Like I said, I don't have any expectations about what I will or won't get achieved on that trip. Some trips I've done an incredible amount of journaling. Some trips I've done absolutely next to nothing. Uh, one time I went to Japan, I travel journaled while I was there and that was really fun, but it was hard to kind of fit it in between because a trip like that where you're doing a lot of things, it's generally like when you're on a train or when you're in line waiting for something or you're watching a parade or so, waiting for the parade to start at Disneyland. Those are the tiny pockets of time that you get to journal. And then you're so exhausted by the end of the day, you're not doing anything else. Or uh, like when I went to Australia, I was doing it all the time because I had nothing but free time and Elijah wanted to journal and he had his own journal. So we were doing it all the time, even like as a type of like family bonding. So that's a completely different experience. The other one, when I went with Stella, when it was literally for the purposes of creating a travel journal, I did next to no travel journaling on that trip. I collected everything on that trip. It was like I was really keenly aware of collecting the moments, the memories, the experiences, pulling in all the information. I was kind of just like soaking it all up and I was just purely documenting it in a journal, uh, just with words and some scribbles. Like sometimes I draw some things. I did a little bit of painting here and there, but really not much. Um, so yeah, it could, I'm on a spectrum when it comes to travel journaling. It could be absolutely nothing or everything in the kitchen sink. And I don't, I don't want to choose for myself what that's going to be. I'm just going to let it happen and see what happens. Anyway, I'm watching the video down there and I see that I'm packing my pencil case. So we must be coming up to the end of the video. Hopefully, uh, you enjoyed watching that video come together. I'm not going to recommend that you should pack your travel journal like this, your travel case, travel set supplies like this. It's just the way I've done it 
this time, changes all the time, usually I take too much. <laughs> um, but it is a way, so hopefully you enjoyed seeing it. I can't wait to uh, get on a holiday and see what we come up with and see what we go and do and experience. I'm mostly super duper excited to go to Disneyland Paris. I've never been there before and I'm so excited to go and see all those entertainment offerings. So hopefully I can find some Wi-Fi and update my Insta stories while I'm there, but I'll be there by the time you see my next video. So um, yeah, wish us luck <laughs> and I'll see you when I get back. Bye.